Welcome back to 520 Speedworks. Uh, something a little different today. We, as you can see, we're not in either one of our shops back in Arizona. We're actually at my parents' house on vacation in uh, Texas. So with this, uh, I had a customer come down and he wants uh, some wire cleanup behind the dash and he actually wants to replace his dash on his Mark III Cobra II Factory 5's carbon fiber dash. So we're gonna go through this. It's gonna be kind of like a little review little like how we put it together and so on and so forth. Maybe a little instructional video for actually building this dash with the glove box and so on and so forth. So first, let's go and get through this. But before I get there, I wanna thank you guys for being here. So if you're new to the channel, please press the subscribe button. If you really like this video, smash that like button, help us out with the algorithm and let's get started. All right, so first off, it came in a nice big cardboard box. I'm not gonna show you that. We had already opened it up when the customer was here, but it came all packaged well from Factory 5. No defects, no dents, none of that kind of stuff. Wrapped really nicely, and it is a really nice piece of carbon fiber. If you guys uh, watched our rebuild video on the, the Rect Cobra, you saw that we did a fiberglass skin. This is high quality, just like that, really nice piece. Um, it is matte carbon fiber. Let's see if we can get in here and show you this. So hopefully the wind isn't too bad, but very, very nice piece of carbon fiber. Very well finished. Got the cutouts for the switches and all that down there. Backside. Really well done. Got lots of area for the glove box and that kind of stuff. So, nice thing about the template is it has markings for Mark 1 and 2, Mark 3 and 4, and this is the outline for where you drill the steering column. So we'll have to figure out why there's two differences. Is it, is it one on top, two on the bottom, three and four? But probably what we're going to do is we're probably just going to go and drill one of these and put the dash on and work our way getting up to the correct size for the hole for this uh, for the steering column to come through. But the very nice thing about this, and then these other holes are all of your, these are all your uh, gauge holes. So you can see them. So it allows you to go and take this thing and set it on here and then mark the holes for the standard setup. They don't have a competition style uh, mask, but uh, you know, you're, if you wanna do a little different than the fat standard factory setup, you're gonna have to just measure it out and do it all on your own. Um, they don't offer the kit with a, I would love for Factory 5 to come out and offer it without the glove box, but right now they don't offer it without the glove box. Uh, I personally don't, if you have a heater, uh, glove box is going to be really hard to put in, so you'd have to figure out something here. Maybe hack the back of it off and uh, and do that. We haven't even opened the rest of this stuff. Probably the glove box door. Double wrapped. Yep, there you go. This is going to fit real nicely in here. The fit and finish is really nice on this thing, guys, so uh, you can't go wrong with it. It's a little pricey, but then call all carbon fibers pretty pricey just because it takes so much to work with, so much to manufacture and that kind of stuff. This is just a standard uh, glove box from Factory 5. <laughs> I can already see that, be careful when you open this because all of the hardware looks like it's just kind of loose and floating in there. So. Um, this is a little different than the standard box just because they are dealing with carbon fiber and such, but uh, you got your nice little key and that kind of stuff. But, so There you go, that is the unboxing of it. Uh, we're gonna just put the standard 
We're gonna put the standard uh, vintage gauges, GPS vintage gauges in it. Standard setup, just like you would get from any kind of kit or any kind of, uh, if you ordered the vintage gauges when you order your kit. So we'll go through how to cut this, how I cut this. People are gonna wanna do this different ways. I know the, uh, the directions call for hole saws and whatnot. We will not be using hole saws. We will be using a Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel, and then we will be using a disc sand grinder. It's gonna take a little while, take a, make a little more mess, but I hate the way hole saws cut. And you gotta get to a 2 16th to a pretty specific size that you're not gonna find a hole saw in. So we're gonna work our way up to it, but that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take the slower, more methodical pace to get to this. And then we're gonna do our own layout on the, uh, on the bottom. So with that, let's get going. All right, guys, I'm just going to put some just standard blue tape on the dash just to keep from scratching it and that kind of stuff. All right, now that we uh, got tape on it, I'm gonna lay a template on it. We use a little tape to uh, hold it in place. All right, we got our trusty Sharpie. All I'm gonna do with this is just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mark the holes here. Now we're at mark 3.1 on this, so we're gonna use the three, four holes. All right, it's easy as that. All right guys, now that we have our dash laid up and marked, we know that uh, through the through the instructions, it says that uh, the big two big holes, so the tack and the speedometer, are three and seven eighths inches wide, round. That's the size of the hole. So, nice thing is, if you're doing new things like this, we've got that hole. It's right here. So we're going to use this to mark the outline of it. But what I'm going to do first is I'm gonna take half of that with my calipers and I'm just going to sit out here and just make some little marks around so that I can know and get the hole centered so that we can draw a circle around and open it up to our way through it. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, I know that seems like a little bit of overkill there, but you know, we now can at least tape this on and mark our full round hole. All right, so see how I drew this line across through them. That way, and I put a mark on my template. That way I can always make sure that they are gonna be straight across. And then I just did it into half and halves, and that just centered them out. But now I know they're all level. And if they are a little closer by a 32nd or a 64th, you're never gonna see it. So, but that's the way that we, uh, we got that one done, so. Okay, now for the really unfun part of actually cutting into this thing. But that's what we're gonna do. I gotta run to the store, get a belt, get a little drum sander. I forgot it at home. So back in a second and we'll get started on that. All right guys, this is a uh, point of no return here. This is uh, always terrifying cutting into good quality carbon fiber and parts, but uh, just go slow and work your way up to it. So I'm just gonna come and just gonna 
cut out the centers of this and then just work my way up. So that's what we're gonna do. Done. I'm gonna go take a dip in the pool now and clean off. <laughs> Be right back. Looks pretty good. Now I'll take all this, I'll take all this back out so that I can finalize this hole and get that hole set just perfect but uh yeah i like it all right guys so this is not going to be the easiest thing to show you but basically what i've done is i've pushed the steering shaft all the way in i've got the dash mounted uh where it needs to be and then i've got tape on the back side of the dash and i've pulled the steering shaft to it and then i'm just going to mark a hole around it and uh, i'm going to drill the center of that and then we're just going to slowly keep opening this up until everything fits We'll poke it through and then we'll slide the Russ Thompson steering bezel on here and then we'll mark a hole and then we'll end up drilling that hole and that's what we're going to do. All right, guys, we got the bezel marked. Uh, we're gonna drill the holes, and then we're gonna open up uh, this little side over here for the wires to run through. Now it is time to mount the go box so with that we're going to drop it in behind but before you do that you need to get it flush to the face so directions just tell you to get a piece of aluminum we're going to use this this uh the template that they gave us This is just gonna get dropped in so it's flat just like that then you build build this little arm things All 
right, so once you do that, I'm gonna mark on here where, uh, where these hit. And I want you to sand all this. I'm gonna sand all that in a minute. Uh, I'm not gonna sand it right this second. So we're gonna mark this and put this on. We're gonna glue these two hinges right here. So this MSD box was in the way. It was actually pushing too close into where the glove box went. So we had to shorten this glove box. So the easiest way I found was literally just to take it and kind of cut about an inch and a quarter out of it and uh, kind of splice it back together, which you can see the rivets in there where I did this. It turned out really nice. Here's the back side of it. Good looking thing. There's a template for the switches for fact standard factory five setup. We did our own uh, setup here for these, so we just uh, laid some tape out and drilled the holes where we wanted them. There we go. Dash is done. Uh, I didn't really show how to put the gauges in because it's really up to you and how you did it. I mean, we showed you how to cut the holes, but for all the stuff on the back side, like, like the wiring and all that, that's... Uh, you guys are gonna do what you're gonna do it your way. This is just the way I do it. Um, yeah, so let's put it in the car. All right guys, due to the joys of electronics and such, while I was putting this video together that you're watching, I do not have the ending of it. So I have some pictures of it. So I'm just gonna walk my way through it. I'm gonna show you guys of what's going on. But uh, yeah, the joys of filming and hard drives and that kind of stuff. So let's go look at it. Here's the uh, before shot. So this dash really gave this car some class. Here it is installed with the lights on, the gauges on, everything up and running. It really, uh, we put new gauges in this thing. It has GPS gauges, the vintage style. It really looked cool with all the lights on, but this dash really turned out nice and really gave the car a little more class and a little more oomph. So it turned out fabulous. All right, guys, that is going to finish the, the install or the review, whatever you want to call this video. Um, this piece from this carbon dash from Factory 5 is fabulous. The quality and the craftsmanship of the, uh, the carbon itself is hands down gorgeous. Uh, the only things that, uh, that I really have any complaints are is the back of the door where you're supposed to put that aluminum piece. The fit and finish is just a little more desirable. Well, I want it to look nicer. So what I did, and I don't have a picture of it, is I wrapped that aluminum piece that you saw me sand earlier in some faux leather, and then I Velcroed it to the back to just cover up the hinges, to cover up and make everything look nice, and it looked super killer once it was done. So... I give this uh, I give this review like a eight and a half, nine out of ten stars. It's a really nice piece. You just got to be careful when you're working with carbon. That's the big thing. So thank you guys for being here. Thank you for those that have subscribed. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Help us out. What really helps us out is hitting that like button. So hit a like button, leave us a comment, and uh, check out some of our other videos that we got going on. We have a bunch of how tos. We have a Willie's Jeep video that we started from scratch to finish. So with that, thank you guys for being here and we will see you next time.